Hey, what's up, everybody? My name is Trophy at the Babbling Belgian, and welcome back to Gwent Edge, the show where we talk about interesting decks to play around with. And today, we're gonna be doing just that because we're gonna be taking a look at the two new Squoia Tell cards, namely Saskia Commander and um, Milva, of course. Milva Sharpshooter. You can see her here on the play screen already. Both of them are really powerful cards, and especially Milva has been received with. Uh, somewhat mixed reception but today we're going to be trying to mix these two cards into a deck that also features a lot of hand boosting so uh, join me in uh, today's video on Milva's hand boosting so i've been experimenting with this deck for about two weeks now and um i kind of ended up at this version so Milva hand boosting simless so the version with simless i also have another version that is um simless um, if <laughs> you catch my drift, but uh, yeah, stupid jokes aside, this is the deck list that I've been using for a while now and seems to be working pretty well. So again, this is a Guerrilla Tactics deck using Milva, so it is the kind of oppressive um, deck that you've seen a lot of, but it has a few other tricks up its sleeve that we'll talk about in a minute. You can check out the deck in its entirety using the Play Gwent link in the description down below, so you can export it to your own game and try it out there. So let me know what you think about it um, over there as well by upvoting um, on the Play Gwent website itself, because that helps out with a lot of uh, exposure as well. So we're going to be going through each and every single card one by one as usual, but again, if, as usual, if you don't want to check that out, you can also go straight to the example matches and check out how I play this deck. But that's about it for the intro, let's go through each and every single one of these cards. Of course, we're starting at the bottom again. This deck contains the moving package, I think they call it right now, so we have to try at Matron. Two times, four power for four provisions and every ally turn on turn end, you move to the rightmost spot to this row, on this row, and then boost an allied unit to the left by one. So uh, every time you play a unit to the right of this uh, unit, she will boost it at the end of the turn and move to its right. So a uh, basic little movement engine. Next up we have our movement um, enabler, as we should call it. So making a bomb is a bomb for four provisions that moves an enemy to the other row and gives it bleeding for four turns. But if it is the only unit on that row that it moved to, you damage it by four instead. Milva works very well with this because Milva will damage that unit as well. We'll talk about her in a minute. Then continuing on with the movement package, we have the Cat Witcher, four power for five provisions. And at the end of every one of your turns, you move self to the other row and damage a random enemy unit on the opposite row by one. If you're at Adrenaline 3, so if you have three cards or less left, you damage it by two instead. So a very powerful damage engine that also works with the Dryad Natron, because once he moves back to that row, he will be to the right of the Matron and she will boost it regardless of whether you put another unit right next to her or not. Next up we have the Dwarf Berserker. I've added this card twice in this deck as well, but just because of Saskia Commander and on top of that it's a really good damage engine. So if this card is never damaged, this card will play for 8 points for 5 provisions. But so starts at 4 power and 4 armor, and as long as it has armor, you uh, damage himself and an enemy unit by 1 uh, at the end of every one of your turns. So basically a very small damage engine that should run for 4 turns. Then we have the Doblatana Sentry, the final piece of the movement uh, package. 4 power and 1 armor for 5 provisions, and whenever an enemy unit moves, you damage it by 1 if you put him on the melee row, and if you put him on the range row, you boost uh, every moving ally by one um, every time that unit moves. So a uh, very good engine card as well. And if you put him on the melee row, you finally have a bit of extra use for this card, because that's another damage tick on every single moving enemy. Now we have a few traps as well in this deck. We have two incinerating traps, so when this card is triggered by uh, the opponent playing another unit, you damage that unit by five. Uh, damage. If you don't get the chance to see another unit being um, played by your opponent, you can also spring it manually, in which case you can choose the unit you damage, but you only damage it by three. Then we have one Hawker Smuggler, so four power for six provisions, I think. Um, this is a good example as to why hand boosting hasn't been dominating just yet. Well, 
hasn't been really good just yet because uh, most of the hand boosting cards are really really costly in provisions so this is a four power card for six provisions and the only thing that it does it's also row lock to the melee row is at the end of every turn you boost a random unit in your hand by one you can't even choose this so i think I mean, I only have one in this deck just because of um, the fact that I'm using hand boosting and because of Saskia. Uh, but I think this card needs to either drop one provisions to be a better card or change its ability to be an order ability that has a single turn cooldown where you can choose which card that you boost in your hand. Because the way it is right now, it is not worth those six provisions. But still, we have one of those in the deck. Now we have a double bountiful harvest because this is a similar deck. Of course, we're going to be going for double bountiful harvest. A nature card where you create and play a bronze quiet elf elf. Um, based on the one that you choose, you boost a card in your hand as well by two. So if you play the left card that you get a selection from, you boost the leftmost card in your hand. If you play the middle one, you boost the middle card in your hand. And if you play the right one, you boost the rightmost card in your hand by two. So basically four extra points of hand boosting, which could be doubled up by Torque. Then we have the Pitfall Trap. So this card triggers whenever your opponent plays basically their next card. It needs to be a face-up card, so a trap doesn't work, but any other card will trigger this card. And you split damage equal to the provision cost of that card across all enemy units. So if it's uh, something like Oneromancy, that's 13 damage being spread out across all your opponent's units. You can also spring it manually for six damage between all enemy units, which is uh, yeah, a pretty good card, especially if your opponent kind of forgets about it or uh, maybe plays something out of hand that, I mean, they could only have golden cards left, so this uh, could be a very powerful card. Now we have Dunka, of course, with hand boosting, you can't omit Dunka. Four power and one armor for seven provisions. Has Veil, has Zeal on her order ability, which allows you to damage an enemy unit by three if you are on the melee row. But more importantly, at the end of every one of your turn, if um, order is not used, you boost a random Squirtel unit in your hand by one. So another hand boosting engine. Now our final trap is a Serpent Trap, very very peculiar trap, so if you have this card on the board and your opponent plays a special card, you automatically destroy the highest power enemy unit on the board. This also just bypasses Defender and everything, it just takes the highest power unit and destroys it. If you want to spring this card manually, you can do so, but then you destroy the enemy with the lowest power, so basically Serpent Trap also functions as a Manticore. Um, because you can trigger this pretty early in the round and just take out the one unit that your opponent has. If that has a high base power, then you uh, just have your provisions back as well. Then we have Torque. Torque is a relic, a five power relic for eight provisions. Um, we have Devotion in this deck, so this card will always start in your hand. And whenever this card is boosted in your hand, you boost a random different unit in your hand by the same amount. So basically doubling up on your hand boosting, which is going to come in really, really handy. Next up, of course, we need a card that can also take some hand boosting. Shald and Skax is just that. Six power for eight provisions. And on deploy, you damage an enemy unit by the amount Sheldon is boosted. So the more this card is hand boosted, the more uh, damage you will do. Basically doubling up on the hand boosts on this card. Now we have Italin, Italin Egli, an elven mage that has six power, who has six power for 10 provisions. And on deploy, you boost a Squirtel unit in your hand by four. Should of course be Torque. Uh, you always have Torque in your hand, so this card will never break. Now we have Call of the Forest, because there's a few cards that we definitely want to be able to play. So we have a tutor card here, where we can just play any Squirtel unit from our deck and boost it by one. And now we have Milva herself. Milva, Sharpshooter, two power for 11 provisions. Has an order ability where she damages an enemy unit by two. She has zeal, so you can do that immediately. And if you death blow, uh, so you kill that unit with the two damage, you shuffle yourself back into the deck. So Milva back into the deck. But the most important part is her passive ability. Um, whenever you move an enemy unit on the board, you summon yourself, so Milva, from the deck to the opposite row and damage that unit that you moved by another one on top of anything else that you've done to it already. 
And then if you kill something with the two damage, Milva goes back into the deck and you can use her when your next move. This can also happen multiple times in a single turn. So if you use all of your leader ability charges, which we use to damage and move enemy units, uh, you can continuously use Milva without your opponent being able to do anything about it. Which is, I think, the biggest problem that Milva has. This card is pretty oppressive since you can't really do anything about it. So as long as you have a uh, five power or six power unit on your opponent's side, depending on whether you have a Borkelon Sentinel, um, a Doblatana Sentry um, available or not, Milva will be able to kill it because you move it with Guerrilla Tactics. That's two damage. Milva does another damage on top of that, so that's three damage. And then the two damage from Milva herself with her order ability is five. If you have the Sentry, you also get another tick, so that is six. So any five to six power unit will die with this uh, setup. Then of course, I talked about this already, we have a Simlas um, combo in this deck as well. So two power for 12 provisions and on deploy you play all copies of a bronze special card from your deck. This should be Bountiful Harvest, so you can play both of those in one go. And of course, put the hand boosting on Torque if possible. And then last but definitely not least, we have Saskia Commander, four power for 13 provisions, has immunity and a deployability where you um, summon up random bronze quartel unit with a primary category that is not on your side of the battlefield from your deck to this row. So meaning that she can pull out any part of the movement um, package or of course the uh, Hawker Smuggler. She also does this every three turns. So she has a three turn counter and at the end of the turn, she um, lowers that counter by one. So when it reaches zero, it resets it and you deplete, repeat the deployability. The only caveat with this card is that you need to have at least 10 different primary categories in your starting deck, which we have, because we have 11, I counted it. It's a very powerful card that also allows you to tin. So I'd like to start with this card, just because that allows us to take round one, then round two, we just hand boost as much as possible. And then round three, we just slam those hand boosted cards on the board. So very, very powerful card that just enables our game plan, basically. And then, of course, our uh, stratagem is the enchanted armor, where we boost a unit in our hand by three and give it to armor. We start with torque, so this is always going to be six points instead of just three. And of course, those two points of extra armor can't hurt either. And then our leader ability is Guerrilla Tactics. We already talked about it a little bit. Three charges of an order ability where we move a unit to the other row. If it's an enemy, you damage it by two. If it's an ally, you boost it by two. But usually we're going to be using this on enemies because with Milva, you gain three extra points per move that you do. So instead of six points and three moves, this is technically... 15 points and 3 moves. So Guerrilla Tactics got an immense boost just because of Milva. And that's it for the rundown of this decklist. We're going to be heading straight into a few example matches just to show off the game plan that we just talked about. So, we're facing a Mir, which is always interesting. Um, but we're not going Milva all the way, so this is um, possibly problematic. And our starting hand is not the best that we could have gotten. I'm um, going to take care of the doubles here. Wow. Jesus Christ. Um, yeah, let's get rid of the cat butcher then and we get making a ball. Worst starting hand ever. So we have basically none of our good goals. So Saskia is something I really need. Sheldon, yeah, there's nothing here. And we get Saskia first, which is... Not going to be good, is it? That's not going to be good. Um, yeah, this is really bad, so I think I'm just going to have to let that first round go, because this is not going to help out in the slightest. I can do a little bit of hand boosting, but that's going to basically be it. Because I want to start with Saskia as well, and we're not going to start with Saskia. We're, we're just not going to do, we're just not going to do anything. I'll guess I'll put the sentry down on the melee row, so when the Cat Witcher moves, it just dies. But yeah, this is not going to work out great. This is a terrible start to a match. Okay, we got two Cat Witchers. Do, do. So they get hit twice, but of course now the Sentry dies. Um, I, I would say just that that's fine. I'm just going to just stop there because this is not going to go anywhere, is it? Um, I can't move because if I move, then I just... Well, get destroyed. I could put the Cat Witcher down. 
just because it hits one of those front cat witchers. That's gonna basically basically be it. I'm gonna just have to keep Saskia for the next round. Because I'm definitely not gonna win this one. But our opponent has actually spent... I don't know why they've put Stigar Castle down. Um, and now we get the Dryad Matron. I uh, would've expected a, a sentry there, but I'm gonna pass because this was... Um, Probably one of the worst rounds in existence. That was a terrible starting hand. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. And the streak seems to be continuing. So definitely not Bountiful Harvest. <sighs> okay, at least we got that. That's something. That is something. At least. So now at least we can do some tuning. Um, but we do get a pass. Yeah, I guess Dunka is as good as any here. Um, just to get a little bit of hand boosting going, we can actually do this for three turns. Uh, so that was one. Just gonna put the Cat Witcher down as well. Um, just to see if I can get just a little bit of hand boosting going. Uh, and then maybe one of the incinerating traps that I'm not gonna use anyway. So there we go, we got hand boosted on Saskia and none of the hand boosting on Tork, okay. So everything but Torque got hand boosted, so that was not something you really want to see, but there we go. Full hearts, <laughs> and now we get Milva. So yeah, the mulligans are obvious here, so Bountiful Harvest gold and Milva gold. Okay. We're still in this game. Although I just realized that we barely have anything for Milva to... For Saskia to pull. So the only thing that she can pull is the Berserker. I think I'm just gonna... What else can I actually pull? So the only card that would be really interesting is Sheldon. But Sheldon needs to be in my hand. So I think Simlas is probably the better option here. So if I can put Simlas... It's not even the middle card to work now. But yeah, let's try. So Simlas into Bountiful Harvest. There we go. Bountiful Harvest. Middle cards. Let's go... Um, yeah, let's, let's try and at least take the middle. That's not even close to the middle card. Yeah, okay, never mind. I guess we're not boosting Torque anytime soon. There we go. That's just one hit. Okay, but that's not actually that bad. Okay. G gonna be like that, are you? So now, of course, I could put down the Doblat on a sentry. And then I'm gonna move the Sorceress up there. So now she's six. And I can do Waylay making a bomb or tempering. Tempering would have been nice if I already had one of those uh, Berserkers on the field. I think Waylay might actually be the better option here. It's going to be six points. Yes, it gives them an extra target, but at least I can get rid of that uh, mad up there. So there we go. Waylay it is. And then we get Simlos as well. Also one of the low bountiful harvest. So this is actually a pretty solid me. So we get... I think that's a Vernosiel's Commando. Yeah. Vernosiel's Commando and the Sentry. So the sentry we're definitely taking out with, um, hmm, oh, though, yeah, we can just do making a bomb. Um, so move that over there, gets killed by Milva, and then Simnos can also go. Um, and that's basically gonna be it. Could have put down the Dryad Matron already, because I can actually do a double Dryad Matron now. And then we get Northern Wind on the back sentry. And that, of course, is going to kill the, the sentry now. Yeah, there we go. Okay. But that doesn't trigger the Venusial's commando anymore, so might as well start with the Dryad Matrons now. And then I need to actually play Saskia first, now that I think about it. Um, because Saskia... Those Berserkers need to tick for four turns. Although no, I can actually play the Matron first. I'm just calculating here, but yeah, I can play the the Matron. No, I can't, because I need to keep a unit in hand. Um, although I don't care about that one ticket damage, because 
I can actually keep these two boosting themselves. Um, which is gonna be a okay. Yeah, there we go. A boost, a boost, the, the Dryad Matron dance. And that actually kills the, the Matron, of course, now. Um, I can put Saskia down. Yeah, let's put Saskia down. Um, we get the Dwarf Berserker there immediately. Um, and I could... Yeah, I don't really need to. There's armor now on that row, so that is absolutely fine. Now, of course, hitting Madoc is the worst thing that you can do, but fair enough, I guess. And now we have a Cat Witcher with six points. Six points. Um, well, I don't really have another option here. I need to play um, Ithilin on this row, so the Matron gets another boost off, put it on Tork, so Tork also boosts that Berserker. And then the Berserker is gonna be next. But for now, I don't have enough firepower to take out the, uh, the Cat Witcher there. Because remember, I can only go to five, same as our opponents. Now I get Gazgas. Gazgas can actually get killed here. So I can take out Gazgas with the, um, the Cat Witcher. Uh, well, not with the Cat Witcher, with, with Milva. Um, then I need to put down the Berserker, because the Berserker will take down even further. I should have put them over here, but yeah. Not really that much of a problem. And then we get Milva going on Gazgas. There we go. This is starting to look pretty okay, by the way. And that is not gonna be... How are you gonna kill something now? The Matron can still die, but... Okay, fair enough, I suppose. Yeah, let's put down the Serpent Trap. I can actually... Yeah, I definitely have an option to use Milval one more time. But I'm not going to. Until the very end, of course, and then Gaetan gets that off. But sadly hits every single hit of the uh, bit of the armor. That was ridiculous. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to move the um, young dryad. That's gonna pop out Milva. Uh, that's gonna hit Vernilcial's commando. Um, then I can trigger the serpent trap and kill that thing. And then Torque can go, yeah, wherever I want Torque. That's 2711, which is actually pretty good. They get another two points with the Cat Witcher. And I don't know what that's going to be. Bran, it takes away those nine points, but that's not going to be enough. 1560? <laughs> Holy crap. <laughs> that turned out better than expected. Because um, that could have been very bad. I should remember not to put a unit to the right side there. Wow. That was really close. I mean, that last match wasn't just terrible. It just had the worst... I had the worst luck when drawing. And we get Nilfgaard. That... I don't like Nilfgaard. I think everybody knows that. But at least we got a little bit of a better hand now. Um, so we have Saskia already. So we need to get rid of the doubles. And we get Sheldon, which is really good. Um, double making a bomb is probably not bad in this matchup. Um... So then next up, I should probably just get rid of the Cat Witcher. And that is perfect. I don't want to draw anything else because I could draw Milva here. Uh, so let's finish redrawing and just go with the flow. I don't have the Hawker Smuggler in hand, so I'm going to put Saskia in the front. Uh, we got a Dryad Matron. Um, and then the Enchanted Armor always goes on Torque. And if you get lucky, that goes on to... No. I was going to say, if you get lucky, that goes on to Sheldon, but it doesn't. And then we got Treason. Ooh, wow, that was a fun way to use Treason, actually. Um, let's put Dunka right next to the Dryad Maiden to get some hand boosting going. But yeah, there goes Saskia Commander. Not fun. Definitely not fun. They can seize Dunka, but Dunka isn't going to help them because Dunka only boosts Squiretel units. So if they don't have a Squiretel unit... Then that's not gonna work. Um, and that boosts Sheldon at least. 
That's a start. Now we got assassination on the drive later. <laughs> okay, okay. Um, I'm gonna put down... The Berserker seems weird, right? You know what? No. No. Berserker. There we go. Because then I have a clean shot on um, the hand boosting. So that hits the Berserker, but doesn't give me an extra copy of it. I'm going to play Simlas now. Um, if I play Simlas now, I can actually kind of control where the boosts go. So every time, if I can pick the right unit every single time, heal or boost. Okay. Uh, there we go. And then uh, an Elven Seer is always nice. But the Sorceress of Dolblatana is better. But I don't have a way of boosting that. So let's just take the Elven Seer because of the extra boosting I get from it. Um, so either I boost the unit by two or I heal something. Probably should boost Dunka here. And then an Elven Seer. That is A-OK. -okay. That is A-OK. -okay. 20-0. And we get a pass. Okay. That means we still get one more bit of hand boosting. And it also goes on the sentry. Would have loved to see a little bit more on the, on Torque there, but it is what it is. But we also are at five cards, so that means that we can still play one card if we get Italin, for example. That would be really nice. So Milva needs to go. And we also get the Hawker Smuggler. Doblatana Sentry can also go. Pitfall Trap. Great, 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 great. So, um, I think the Hawker Smuggler might actually be better. Yeah, let's put this boy down so he gets some more hand boosting going. And that goes on Torque, on Sheldon, so that is really good. We get a Tourney Joust. And that is fine. I could continue the hand boosting here. Uh, but our opponent is really not playing any units. Could do Italin, but then if our opponent plays over that... Yeah, no, I'm gonna pass. I am gonna pass. And we got Jan Calvate, so it is that hand arranging deck. So now their deck is sorted from highest provision card to lowest provision card. So the next three cards that they draw are basically the best cards in their deck. Which is a bit scary. Not as scary as this. Um, Catwitcher can go. And then I'm gonna keep it as this, because. Um, so the only cards left in my deck are Milva the Berserker and the Serpent Trap. So I could get the Serpent Trap, but I'm just as likely to get Milva and I don't want to get, want to get Milva. So let's finish redrawing here and our opponent goes first. And our opponent plays a Fire Scorpion, so that means that we're definitely going to take that out. Yeah, let's just take that out with the, uh, the Guerrilla Tactics Milva combo. Um, and then we can... Do we put down a Dolblat on our sentry? I think we could. It's either that or the Berserker or the Catwitcher. Yeah, let's put the, the sentry down in the back. No harm in doing that. And then we get Fion. Fion is a pretty hefty defender. Um, hmm. Can put down the Pitfall Trap now. I should have probably done that before. But let's do that right now. And now we get Hefty Helge. Hefty Helge is going to get hit by the Pitfall Trap. That's 8 points spread out and that is perfect. Uh, so now we're going to be making a bomb on Fion. Um, and hit Hefty Helge there. Um, I could also just finish this off now. Because I can move Fion with that. Yeah, and we can get Milva on Fion. There we go. Cleaned up. Cleaned up pretty nicely. And then we get a good extra juicy target there. Um, could get the Catwitcher down, uh, which is probably the better option here. Yeah, let's put the Catwitcher down um, and see what he does. Of course, hit the one unit I didn't want him to hit. Obviously, because that's exactly what you do. I think most of the tourney jousts are gone. So yeah, two tourney jousts, trees and... I think most of it is gone, so Lydia could do making a bomb, yep, and that just get, kills the Cat Witcher. Italin is pretty nice right now, but I want to guarantee it going on Sheldon, so I'm going to put the Dolblatana Sentry in the back. 
That is now up to 11. Because this way I can guarantee that Italin's 4 point boost going on Torque will also go on to Sheldon Skaggs. Which is just the best, isn't it? And uh, we get Yennefer's Invocation, of course. Of course, but that doesn't really matter all that much. So now we can put those points on Torque, and Torque puts them on Sheldon as well. There we go. We get another Blightmaker, so that's going to thin out their attack even further. Um, that's actually good, a target on the front row. So now I can put the remaining Cat Witcher on the front row. And that will just take back and forth, so that's a 7 on the ploy. There we go. And then Reens. So Reens. Reens takes out the... Uh... Okay. What the fuck just happened? So move on to your graveyard and destroy an enemy unit with power equal to that unit. Okay. Uh, but Reens I can take out. Um, like this. And then like this. And this. There we go. Okay. Four damage. So I'm gonna play Torque first. So that's 18 and two armor. If that final card is just Karate Heatwave, that's going to be a very trolly deck. And it is uh, not. It is... Okay. But I can take that out with Sheldon, and that's just going to be enough. Yeah, that is going to be enough. So there we go. It's not even just, it's 9 points in difference. So there we go. That's exactly the tactic that I'm trying to use with this deck. So try to push as hard as I can, and then the hand boosting should come in clutch at the very end. Let's try one more just for variety's sake. Ooh. Syndicate. This might actually hurt a lot. <laughs> Syndicate is a really tough matchup. And we have a crappy hand again, yeah. With only two mulligans, so I'm gonna mulligan those two and wow. Wow. That is absolute horse shite. My draws in this recording session has have been ridiculous. Is that a new animation for the coins? Never noticed that before. Is man's ripe patch for um. Okay. That was really aggressive for some reason. Yeah, let's just start with Dunka then. Might as well get some hand boosting going. We got lucky, it might go on to Torque, but we're not getting lucky in this match, are we? Poison on the Jackal. Okay. I do have the Serpent Trap, by the way. That is really interesting, because the Serpent Trap will just kill that thing. Um, 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 um. Ah, let's put the Dried Matron down. I can use the Serpent Trap in a minute anyway. And it's just going to go all out on that Jackal. That's going to be peculiar. Or is it just a poison-heavy deck, and just because I had a Veiled Unit on the board, they used the poison on their own? Okay. Payday. No, I... <laughs> it's so tempting. It's so tempting to just do this now. I could have just traded it as well, because that would have killed the, um, the Jackal. But if I get lucky, it might even be a special card that they use on their own units. And that's just going to kill their own Jackal as well, and they won't have any targets. Aww. Okay, they calculated that correctly. Um... Let's put down that one cat witcher then. And just trigger the trap. There it goes. There we go. Won the first round pretty easily there. But just because our opponent wasn't really Yeah, focusing on Yeah, that was a really weird round. Just going all in on that single jackal was a was a bit weird. And now we get Saskia Commander, so I can actually tin some things. Um, so Milva gone, Pitfall Trap is fine. I'm gonna get rid of that Dwarf Berserker and we get the Hawker Smuggler in return. So Saskia, Commander in the back, and we get the Berserker, which is crap. And then we get a Tax Collector. Ah, fine, I suppose, for now. I can let that Tax Collector go. And there we go, we finally get some Torque action here. Okay, can put down a trap next. 
because I still need one more turn to get the next spawn from, uh, yeah. There we go. And then we get the Passiflora Peaches are gonna die. And then I'm definitely gonna put down uh, Milva. I'm moving that Mutants Maker over here. And then killing the Tax Collector. And then I can put the Cat Witcher... Or no, I don't really need to actually. Just gonna put down the sentry here. And that's just gonna keep yeah, boosting those. And the mutants maker indeed would have killed been killed by the berserkers, so that's also another problem. Okay. Poison on the sentry. You can put another incinerating trap down. And I don't need to put a Witcher down, because the Witcher is, I think, guaranteed now. Um, so then we put the Pitfall Trap down. Which is probably not going to do much, but at least it's on the field then. Oh, we get, yeah, because the Sentry now died, it gets another Sentry. Ah, uh, that was 9, but yeah, 9 damage, but it's only going to hit that, uh, that Trafficker there. There goes the Trafficker. And then we got Sigi Reuven. So next up, the Cat Witcher. It's a pretty big Cat Witcher. Um, so that should be a-okay. I could try and kill Sigi, but yeah, Sigi's gonna be a pretty good uh, combo there. And we still have a movement package going. Even though all the boosts are now going onto Torque for no reason whatsoever. You're not gonna... Well, you can. Yeah, but Jackpot, they can actually kill the, the Cat Witcher there. But it is actually... Not enough to finish everything off. Um... That's the leader ability gone. I'm actually gonna pass now. Because I'm still four points ahead and we actually get another Cat Witcher on the board in a minute. So they need to do, even if they don't know it yet, they need to do eight points here. Okay, they do know it. Unless they don't spend it now. Yeah, okay, there we go. They did realize that they needed to make more points, because of course Saskia is going to trigger one more time and get rid of that... Uh... Oh no, I already used that Witcher, so it's not going to spawn anything. Fair? Fair enough. Fair enough. But now they start, and I do have a, a couple of bombs in my hand. Okay, so I need to get rid of Bountiful Harvest. Italin is really good. I'm going to get rid of making a bomb again. And we got Call of the Forest, which is really good. Oh man. Sadly, we don't get Sheldon Skaggs. Because that would have been even better. But now we almost have a perfect hand. Yeah, let's just use Milva on this. They know it's gonna die, so it might as well fulfill that expectation. Now, Italin on Torque. Torque is gonna put that on the Berserker as well. And now we still have Simlos, so this is gonna be pretty good. Pretty good indeed. Not a lot of targets for our opponent to take out as well, so so I can actually kill it um, with making a bomb. So making a bomb is four, Milva is another one, and now we can kill it with Milva just like that. There we go. I think we have this against Syndicate Jackpot. I didn't expect this one, because this is my final match that I'm recording. I was just saying, oh, I'll, I'll just do that just for fun, for funsies. But this is looking really good, because now the um, the King of Beggars is here. That's not that much of a problem. I can now use Simlas to get two more uh, Bountiful Harvests, harvest just, just on the board. Um, left is a-okay. And then left is not that okay. But it is, yeah, probably a better card anyway. And that's four extra points, so there we go. And there we go. Boom! So 19 and 12 in our hands, and we still have something that we can move. And again, if it's your last move, it doesn't really matter whether you kill something or not. Because um, we don't actually want to kill something with that final hit. Um, 
So I could just, yeah, let's just use every single one of our order abilities. Um, we can just use Milva here as well. I, as I said, I don't need to kill anything. Milva counts as a human, and then the Dwarf Berserker over here, which is 31 points. Um, and I can just... Yeah, I could transform her for another single extra points, but it's not going to make that much of a difference. And that hits the armor, sadly. And then we got a seize on zero coins. So yeah, that, there we go. We got this. Wow, we won against Syndicate Jackpot. And that hit the armor again. <laughs> oh, why? Oh, why? That was... Yeah, that was interesting. But yeah, there we go. We even win against Syndicate Jackpot if we uh, play our cards right. And that's going to be it for this episode, but uh, there we go, we have another uh, deck guide in the bag. So ha Milva hand boosting with Simlas is uh, pretty powerful. I think we've went over all the uh, the combo pieces, so uh, yeah, mainly the game plan is try to get round one however way you can. If you can do it with Saskia, it's probably the better option, but as you saw, we could also do that with just playing traps at the start and try to win that way. Um, and then if you feel cocky enough you can use the next round to start hand boosting as much as possible and drain your opponent from their best cards and then keep torque and sheldon skags at the very end maybe even with simlas as you saw at the very end because uh, they're all very powerful cards and you have the tools to get them all out of your deck because i think at the very end i think we had about three cards left in our deck so uh, it is definitely possible to do that with this deck and that's it for this episode don't forget to check out the deck yourself you can import it using the link to the play gwent website in the comment section well in the description down below and upvote it there as well always helps out on my end just to see what is popular and what is not what is interesting to you guys and uh, if you want to talk about this deck further, if you have any suggestions, leave them in the comment section down below. Because uh, that's what we're here for after all, trying to help each other out and trying to come up with some fun combos. So uh, thank you guys enormously for watching and I hope to see you in the next episode of Gwent Edge. Stay nutty and happy holidays everyone.